a colorist this is actually primarily for you but it's for everybody but you inspired me with that question because uh, it took a lot of courage to be that candid and uh, you touched my heart because what you've had to endure what you're having to endure is um, I mean people might be inclined to brush it off as superficial because the surface of the body is superficial by nature but it's actually hugely profound I think anyone who would feel that they could manage to literally face the world if they had facial disfigurement without any difficulty would be deluded because I mean we seek the approval in, uh, for the sake of inclusion from everyone around us and the first stage of doing that is looking like we fit or looking like we're desirable to be included so you've really been up against it and uh, I feel for you and I'm sure everyone must do and I would be uh, hesitant to jump in with kind of glib uh, solutions because it would be it would be stupid but this is what uh, occurs to me um, we oscillate between or we can oscillate between the enlightened state and the unenlightened state. The unenlightened state is the part of the a part of us that's brought into the, the whole drama of being human. Um, the the enlightened state is the part of us that knows that what we are is actually eternal and that the presence in us that, that's bearing witness to the drama unfolding is the real identity. The the being that is in the drama, the one that feels the the shame, the pain, the the feeling of, of inferiority, exclusion, and all the things that we all fear feeling, um, as well as uh, the one who feels the, the joy and the inclusion and so on. Uh, that is just a passing phenomenon. It's a construct that we create ourselves from the time we're old enough to think. Um, but it's all it is. It's, it's like a, it's the personality which comes from the Greek word persona, meaning the mask. But it's just the mask that we put on to be in the play while we're passing through. However, um, you know, the, it, it's uh, an experience that we're feeling. So uh, how to deal with the pain um, of, uh, that I can imagine that you must feel, we all do under the surface. We'll have the fear of feeling that pain. That's why there's such a huge cosmetic industry, such a huge fashion industry and so on. You know, if we, if we weren't afraid of feeling that pain, of being excluded because we don't look right in our own opinion, uh, there wouldn't be those industries. Um, now, if you, uh, 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 for the sake of what we're discussing, you think of the the, the human part, the part that's lost in the drama of it all, that feels the pain, the, the shame and everything else, um, that exists solely in the front part of your brain and body. The, the front part of the brain is where you run the narrative by which you describe reality to yourself. And in doing that, you create pictures, you create a movie in the forebrain. And being the brilliant storytellers that we are, the movie is really convincing. And being convincing, we feel a lot in reaction to it. Anxiety, anger, grief, sadness, joy, whatever. Um, but it's a sort of a, a manufactured realm of feeling. It's not real feeling. It's feeling about something that is imaginary. And that's how we amuse ourselves. We kind of keep ourselves engaged in the, in the, the realm of the so-called world. By, by doing that and in that we're then subject to the underlying mechanism of yin and yang which subtends all manifest reality which has it that where there is light there is dark where there is beauty there is ugly where there is ease there is difficulty where there is pleasure there is pain and they move in a fluid balance with each other one will turn into its opposite it just all happens in the fullness of time and when you are inhabiting that front part of you, you're lost in that. You are subject to it. You will feel 
the the intensity of the, the 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 pain of contraction as much as you'll feel the elation of the pleasure of expansion that comes with the yin and the yang contracting expanding motion which is fine and that's what the front part of you is meant to do you're here to experience that however you the real you sits behind all that in the back it stays in the realm that's every everywhere rearwards of your side seams rearwards of the ears it's the hunter-gatherer consciousness that is present it's the back brain in far far more intelligent far more all know it is all knowing it knows it's tuned in and when your the weight of your person is gathered in the back of you you have power you have the power of that omniscience you have perspective you're then able to observe bear witness to and accommodate the experience going on in the front whatever that is however bad that is and i do understand this is a chronic challenge for you of intense proportions i get it i, I do and um however you are not that so when you sit behind it in that moment of sitting behind it the pain of it is gone it's just a residue an energetic residue occurring in the front of your body and brain and that is the solution by doing that you're giving yourself moments out of the drama the drama is then able to reset itself you gain invaluable energy that you'd otherwise be using in conflict with yourself so really this is the healing this is how it, how it's done when in this state when in the back you're then able to discern what your real intention is and to express it to yourself. And in doing that, you set that a, a chain of, of uh, action and reaction in motion uh, that will manifest the state you intend. And I would suggest that when in the back of you, it is that, and you know this already, I know, but the, the beauty of the soul that people are looking for in each other in order to enjoy beautiful connections because that is the reward of being included. That is the reward of engaging with humanity is enjoying beautiful connections with people. Um, the, the beauty that inspires the desire in others to connect with us and vice versa is the beauty of the soul. It's not the physical structure of the face. And by concentrating on accessing, uh, intensifying and radiating freely the beauty in your soul, which you have to realize is probably quite a lot higher level than most people because you've had to learn to be with this. Most people don't have that challenge, so you've attained something most people never will. Therefore, there's a refinement to the beauty in your soul, potentially. And as you intend to share that ever-increasing amounts, with ever-increasing intensity, that others will instinctively feel that. And the physical appearance will be completely irrelevant, that you are lovable and... Uh, worthy of love as much as anyone because of this and as I was alluding to at the beginning th this state you will come in and out of so it's not as if this is how you have to be now and everything's going to be all right it doesn't work like that but the fact that you can come back and and regather and get your perspective set your intention is a hell of an improvement on just being stuck in the front of you where the pain is. And, and by and by, the more you do it, the more you tend to eventually default to the back position, which means that most of the time you're in the enlightened state and therefore the, the pangs and the pains of interaction with, with, uh, with humanity, which everyone feels for one reason or another, um, become almost inaudible almost unnoticeable. So there's a, a, an equanimity possible, a, a perpetual equanimity, a fluid equanimity possible. And that 
really, I guess, must be the, you know, the Bugatti of all states, I reckon. Maybe there's a car even better than a Bugatti, I don't know, whatever it is, this is the, the one. And um, I, I trust that that is of some help to you, a colorist, and I wish you well, and I wish you this. I wish you the, the power that comes from this, and I do to everybody, of course, because we all, all of us are dealing with the same issues to varying degrees. Well, thank you. Okay, goodbye.